Rated M for mature. Hello, my name is Rob Loftus, and I'm the producer on Fear for Vivendi Universal. And I'm sitting here with Ken Rossman, who's an executive producer here at Vivendi Universal. And we're actually showing him our E3 demo and the intro sequence to that. Hello, everybody. Again, uh, I'm Ken, and I'm sitting here with Rob. And uh, we're just starting up the E3 demo of Fear. It's a, uh, an intro sequence that you know basically teases the, the initial storyline of Fear and what we're showing is uh, our character Paxson Fettel, who's our nemesis. Uh, he's kind of sitting in this institution-like place and he's seemingly going mad. And what he is, though, is he's the next generation battlefield commander. And he has a psychic link to his troops. He's been created by a company called Armacam Technology Corporation. And he's gonna escape here. And since he represents a significant investment on behalf of the Department of Defense, Naturally, they want him back. So to get him back, they call in the fear team. And, and just who is fear, Rob? Fear is a special forces unit that was created by the U.S. Army to, to combat paranormal threats to national security. And what fear stands for is first encounter assault recon. So basically, when anything unexplained happens, they call these guys in. So these are the secret best of the best. These are the special special forces. Very nice. And in ATC, I mean, what what were we just witnessing there? ATC stands for uh, Armacam Technology Corporation. These are the guys that are actually guarding Paxton Fettel. and you're you're watching uh, Paxton basically, you know, he slit that guy's throat. Now you're seeing his soldiers come out to his aid. Remember, he's got that psychic link, so you can command from afar. Definitely leaving some mayhem in his way. Yeah, there's definitely a good amount of blood in fear, as you can <laughs> see there. We even got those reflections on it, too. It uh, looks a little disturbing. What's going on here, Rob? A little bit. Uh, we're not really releasing exactly what that is. We're kind of leaving it up to the player as he, uh, as, as he goes through the game. But needless to say, it's definitely disturbing. And who are we listening to here? We're listening to a uh, phone call that's being made to a senator describing the uprising that we just witnessed. And what he's going to do is call in the fear team. Now you said uh, you showed this at E3, or this is the E3, but you also showed this at uh, the Game Developers Conference as well? Well, we showed a, a little bit of a different version than what we're showing here uh, at the Game Developers Conference. We showed a different level uh, that was essentially all action. But we w and it's with a little bit of the paranormal uh, weaved in as well. But we wanted to show in this demo was kind of how our AI works, how the paranormal narrative is weaved in, and how that cinematic combat is really going to feel for the player in some tight, close quarter battles. So right now we're looking at it through the player's eyes. Is that what we're saying? That's right. We're looking through the player's eyes, and, and he's. He's this new recruit to the, f to the fear team, and uh, we're, we're seeing Rowdy Betters there on the right, who's the fear team coordinator, describing what just happened in the scene that we saw to, uh, to uh, the fear team members who uh, here are Jin and Jankowski. So now the developer this time around is, or for this game, is Monolith? Yeah, this is, the fear is uh, a Monolith production, and uh, what they've done is they've created an all-new engine uh, specifically to power fear. And another word about Monolith, I mean, these guys, I mean, there's a wonderful pedigree for first-person shooters there. These are the same guys that brought you No Endless Forever, No Endless Forever 2. I mean, there's a, a wealth of creative knowledge just, you know, in terms of, like, creating the narratives. And there's also, you know, a deep technical knowledge in terms of creating, a, you know, the engine that actually powers the games. Now you brought up this is a brand new engine, so I mean, what what specifically are we expecting out of this? What you can expect out of this is, you know, we're definitely going to take advantage of the DirectX 9 feature set, and we're going to do some some really cool, you know, full screen effects. We're going to have, you know, all these particles that are going uh, in the world. You can see see there. We've got like the support for the Havoc Physics Library. 
you, the, the character models are extremely detailed. You can get it up r actually really close and actually see like all the different details that are in like the helmets and things. It's, it's really, really cool. So uh, big improvements from previous generations. Absolutely. You can see the, like we can do soft shadows as well. So yeah, the lighting definitely looks like a, a, a brand new lighting model. Yeah. So now, how was this received at E3? Well, you know, we had a great time showing this off at E3. It's, we did uh, on-the-floor demos uh, to the public and to the press, but we only showed the press this demo that you're actually seeing here. Uh, we didn't show this publicly. Um, we showed a, a piece of this publicly, but not the whole thing. What we want to do is give like the press it's a little bit more, and it was specifically a little bit more of the paranormal moments like you're seeing here. I was about to say, we just, we just saw something run by. Was it, uh... That was Alma, who has made her first appearance here in this demo. And she's uh, kind of a character that we help, that we use, help create this tension in, in, the, uh, in the world. We see the, the, the brief glimpse of her out, out of the corner of her eye there, and we use shadows there to kind of let the player know that there's something behind them. But then when they look, it's not necessarily there. So this... this this paranormal storyline that we weave in through fear is definitely a, a key part of it, but at its core, fear is definitely a hardcore action game. So you definitely have, uh, I mean, the sound, you definitely have some detail and, and girth and, and, and meat in the sound here as well. Uh, the sound design is totally key, especially in these cinema, in, in these uh, combat moments that you see with, you're seeing here. It's, you know, Monolith really wants to have the player feel like they're taking part of an action movie. It's you think of that like the tea house scene in Hard Boiled, where there's all that mayhem going on. You can see all the things like breaking apart, the bullets flying, tons of guys dying. It's it's totally the focus in Fear to create that cinematic combat, and a big part of that is actually having AI that feels like a special forces unit. So check out how they work. In this, in this section right here. They're using the environment, they're using cover, and they're working together as a squad to come get at the player. I see this new engine's uh, quite robust on the particle effects as well. Absolutely. It's part of like making the player feel the immediacy of the event. You can see if all these particles going, you can hear the sound going, it's it's really frantic. It's just like a close quarters battle really would be. Absolutely. Now you said your your enemy AI is these are unscripted events, so these are these are completely unique each time. Yeah, when it, when it, when I say I, AI, man, it's like I I'm really meaning it. This is like it's part of their behavior. It's not a scripted event. These guys are coming out. They're 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 looking for where they can take cover, and uh, then they're, they're taking it. It's, and none of that stuff is scripted. We we must have shown that demo like 80 times at like GDC and you know E3, and each time it played out differently. And it looks like that guy just fell with uh, with some nice ragdoll. Absolutely, it, so. it's, Havoc is definitely a, a, a very very key part of you know the experience. But what uh, you're seeing here actually is uh, the use of slow mo, which is another very important part of combat and fear. At any point in time, gonna, the player's going to be able to you know hit this hit a button that enables the slow mo mode. And what that does is it puts them in control in, in control of their own like John Woo style moment where you're seeing. The world slow down. You can see all the particles going everywhere, and it's strategic as well because if you're surrounded by multiple AIs, you can just hit that slow mo button and just kick all their asses. Now, is that slow mo uh, my power, or what is that? You know what it is. It's kind of like a heightened sense of reflexes. It's a reflection of your training, and you're just, you're just that good you can remember you're you're part of the fear team and you're 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 the best of the best so it's kind of a representation of that check this out here what you're seeing here is uh we're going to show you an uh, offhand grenade that's actually the proximity mine keep your eye on that grenade as it goes in there boom 
Nice mayhem. <laughs> exactly. It's total. It's like total screenshotable moment. So all those screenshots people have been seeing, this is it in motion, huh? This is it in motion, yeah. Plasma rifle is an awesome weapon. You hear that great sound with it. But it's also a one-shot kill against an unarmored opponent. So you can completely vaporize guys. And of course, support for the digital scope on it. So you can take out guys from afar. So were there any, were there any changes between E3 and uh, or Game Developers Conference, GDC and E3? Well, you know, it's especially after E3, there's you know, the death effect you're seeing here on the plasma rifle is definitely you can see that that big blood cloud, but what we actually added after this was it actually ejects a skeleton, so it's like you're completely just like flaying the flesh off of the guy. It's definitely very cool. And it looks like a great use of indoor and outdoor environments. Yeah, fully... you, 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 we've got uh, the, these outdoor sections here. It's got the, the indoor shootouts, come outside to, the, to these outdoor areas. It looked like you were just doing a kick there. What was that? Yeah, you know what you actually can do in fear is melee attacks, and uh, the player can do like roundhouse kicks and slide kicks, and that was actually the, uh, the double kick that you just saw. So it's 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 an, an added weapon to your arsenal. So you're, you're in a close quarters battle, you you hear the click of your your empty magazine, and you can just go to blows. Looks like we just saw an example of your your AI kind of using the cover system, or right. what exactly was well, that? Well, actually, he jumped over that railing to get away from us, and now we're going to go hunt this guy down. And I believe you guys won an award at E3, is that is that true? Yeah, you know, it's the reception at E3 was was very, very cool. It was great to, to show the, the game off to everybody, and... And we actually ended up winning best action game of the show from the game critics. So, yeah, we couldn't have been happier, really. It was a great honor to be, you know, with with the company that we were with. So you saw all that action. Here's where we're going to weave in the paranormal. You see these apparitions. We, we, it's, this is all meant to be very subtle. We don't want to be really in your face because we don't want the player to get numb to it. So these... These things will really get underneath your skin, make you think. But we're also going to have some larger kind of signature moments we're actually calling nightmare moments that we'll use to kind of advance the, advance the narrative and, you know, really creep the player out. So here we're going into this hallway, right? You can see those lights on the side. There's definitely something wrong. The door closes, we turn around, and there's Alma. And then there's a flash, and we're seemingly t transported to this completely different spot. There's blood on the, you know, bloody footprints on the floor. There's blood all over the ceiling. And we got this really cool full screen effect. Definitely disturbing. <laughs> Absolutely. Little girls walking on ceilings filled with blood is definitely, definitely very disturbing. We're going to transition right back to where we were, but we're still in this vision state, this hallucination state. We're seeing Pax and Fettel interrogating somebody. We snap out of it, and we realize we're too late. That guy got owned. Again, that sound is great. We wanted to end the demo showing off uh, an enemy that we hadn't shown before, which was uh, the powered armor you just saw there. And he makes his appearance, and that's where we chose to end the, uh, the E3 demo.